Welcome to Words From My Face, the only show where your host does not have to wear pants. That's because you never see below... Okay, let's keep moving on. But uh, on tonight's show, we have the sports coming at you. We are talking about the NLB... ML, NLB... There's no such thing as the NLB. It's the MLB trade deadline bonanza. Uh, we have Kevin Durant to DC. And we're talking AFC West preview. Stay tuned. <laughs> Round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Think though, Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. Yeah. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Words From My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. <laughs> and you might notice there is something a little bit different about me right now, and that is because Chewbacca got angry with me and took his chainsaw to my hair. Other, I, I do think he did a good job with it, but I prefer not such a traumatizing experience usually when I get my hair cut. Yeah. yeah, it's always the problem with Wookiees. They sometimes feel that your hair is encroaching on their level, uh, which is why I usually hang low when Chewbacca's around. <laughs> he's he's incognito when Chewbacca rolls through the room. So yeah, <laughs> that I am. But Very. yeah, so so tonight we got a sports show coming at you uh, because it's Thursday night. I mean, what else would we do on Thursday night? <laughs> silly people, internet. Uh, yeah. Okay, you're not silly. I, I joke. I'm joking. But yeah, so tonight we got coming at you, as you saw in the intro. We're talking about the MLB. Uh, their trade deadline was today at 4 o'clock, and so there was a million trades happening. Talk about some of the bigger ones. Uh, Kevin Durant, possibly to D.C., and uh, the AFC West preview, because that'll be part of our running down each NFL division before the beginning of the season rundown, preview season de- rundown. That is what we're going to call it. We're going to break those down into letters and come up with some really cool acronym, but don't have that quite as of yet. Producer. Babbles. Babbles. Okay, our Babbles preview. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so let's start it out this week the same way we started out every week, and that is with the Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week Award. <laughs> that was an angry one right there. Maybe next week let's lighten it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, so this week's Chewbacca Chainsaw Award goes to Cleveland Indians pitcher Corey Clubber, and this is because he had one of the most remarkable games pitching ever. Now, I gave it to Clayton Kershaw a couple months ago or a month ago for pitching a no-hitter, but this guy didn't pitch a no-hitter. He pitched a complete game, but did it only throwing 85 pitches. So that's 85 pitches he threw total from for nine innings. Now, break it down. I did the math for you, so you don't have to. That's 9.44 pitches per inning. Now, think about it. Each inning, you face three batters, minimum. Three strikes equals an out. So he pretty much kept every batter to three pitches. I mean, that is remarkable. That is amazing. I believe that's a record. I didn't really delve too much further into it. But that is is pretty sweet. And that was shot to us by at Luke Skywalks on Twitter. So thank you, sir. Uh, But that is one amazing feat. So, Corey Clubber, you are our Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week Award winner. That was that was a little more happy and pleasant, even though Chewbacca's chainsaw is never pleasant. Never. <laughs> but yeah, so let's let's roll that in to baseball because today, like I said, July thirty first every year, four o'clock is the trade deadline. Now baseball's a little weird because there's always a ton of trades that happen, and you can still technically trade players, but you got to drop them to waivers, and there's a little bit more of a process. But today, at 4 o'clock, no teams are allowed to trade anymore after that. So let me run down some of the bigger trades that happened. Now, it seemed like this year, the Boston Red Sox decided that they wanted to hold a fire sale, and all players must go. 
uh, in the past 15 days, the Red Sox have enacted at least five or six trades. I mean, it's amazing. They, they pretty much were like, hey, if we were good on our team, we're going to get rid of you because we suck this year. But, yeah, so that and was interesting. So that was more. one of them. <laughs> huh? And they want well, to suck more? The reason they're doing this is because a lot of the times, the reason the MLB trade deadline is so big is because time, a lot of teams, especially teams that are not really going to make the playoffs, they'll trade off some of their better players that are on the last year of their deal or only have a year left because they're afraid that they're going to leave them anyway and then they're going to get nothing from them if they leave them if, and not trade it. So a lot of times you'll see them trade off good players just so that they don't have to worry about just losing them. They can at least get something back. That's why you'll see a lot of players being traded for prospects because you can develop those players a little bit in your farm system. And, you know, if it doesn't work out, not that big of a deal. If it does work out, then, hey, you, you got a good player. So but let's start off with a couple of the trades. Uh, now, my opinion for the biggest trade of the day was, again, um, was the Tigers actually traded to get David Price. David Price is the 2012 Cy Young Award winner for the AL from the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. Tampa Bay, past couple years, have been pretty darn good. This year, they're at the bottom of the AL East. So they're thinking, hey, Price is up to go after this year. He's probably going to go to the Yankees because Yankees just pay everybody a ton of money, or the Red Sox. I mean... Eh, he could go either one of those places because they'll pay him hundred million dollars and he'll be happy. But um, so he went to the Tigers, which really, oh man, the Tigers are setting up for a great playoff run. He's in addition to Scherzer and Verlander and Porcello, and they they're just stacked when it comes to their starting pitchers. But so the Tigers got David Price. Now this was a three-team trade. Mariners got Austin Jackson, mm, kind of a prospect. He, he can he can play, but he's not not that great of a level. And the Rays got Drew Smiley and Nick Franklin, two prospects. So uh, that that was a pretty big deal. Uh, you usually don't see that caliber of pitcher going at the trade deadline, but that was, mm -hmm. that was pretty interesting. Um, it still surprises me, too, though, that this, the trade deadline is so late in the season. You know, it's, a, it's still, well, like, what, only two months out from the playoffs? Yeah, but you still... I mean, when we say late in the season, they still have about 60 games left. So that's most sports this whole season. More than halfway through the season. Like, yeah, it's kind well, of a weird time to have a end of trade. Like, if they're going to do it that far, why not just trade all the way through? But with, with, well, I, I mean, I get your point, but they they got to stop it somewhere. They got to solidify the roster somewhere. But really, you see this in baseball more because you can plug players in without it affecting team chemistry more than you can in other sports. Like basketball, all five players have to be able to move together and they have to really get a rhythm for each other. So you don't see as many trades at the trade deadline. Football is the same thing. There's more to learn. There's more set plays and everything. Baseball, if I'm a pitcher, it's just go pitch. <laughs> what signals mm -hmm. do you like? Okay. If you're an outfielder, it's go stand out there, catch the ball if it hit, gets hit to you. If we call a shift, just move over this way and hit the ball. I mean, it's not as much uh, of a I mean it's a team sport but it's not as much of a team sport as it is an individual set of gr guys made put together to make a good team it's, it's I'm just, just surprised that they they allow it this late and if they're going to allow it this late why not just keep allowing it forever yeah I mean yeah, but you gotta yeah, well, I mean, trade in the middle of a game I don't in know, the middle of the World Series that, that would be interesting. <laughs> be like, we know you're not in the World Series right now, but that guy was really good this year. Can we have him for just a series? Sure, here you go. So, but that would be interesting. Uh, and some of the other big deals that went on: uh, the Nationals and the Indians made some trades. Uh, the Nationals got an uh, infielder. Now I'm going to butcher this name. It's Osrudra Ball. Yeah, whatever. Comments down below. Tell me how horrible I am at pronouncing names. Uh, Oscar Gibral Cabrera, who is an infielder. Um, really, he's he's been being brought in to replace Ryan Zimmerman, who's gone out again with a hamstring injury this time, I believe. And they traded away a prospect named Zach Waters. So again, the prospect for a player who's gonna be able to step in immediately and help the Nationals with their player up front because they are about a game and a half back from the Atlanta Braves, and it's been back and forth roller coaster ride all year with those two. So they really could use extra bat and a little bit more help in the infield. Uh, another big trade today was uh, Boston Red Sox. This is probably one of the bigger trades. Um, they got Chewbacca Chainsaw previous award winner Jonas Cespedes for 
and a 2015 draft pick for Johnny Gomes and John Lester. Now, John Lester, he's not a gr- amazing pitcher. He's not going to just blow the doors off, but he is a good left-handed pitcher, and they have a lot of right-handed handed pitchers there in Oakland. They, they could use that lefty in there just to throw a change of pace. And Johnny Gomes is a decent outfielder, so he'll be able to fill in pretty well for Jonas Cespedes. But Cespedes, I mean, this guy's a beast, I mean, and he's still under contract for the next couple of years, so... Don't quite see what Oakland was doing, but Billy Bean knows more than me. That's why they made a movie after him, so... I don't know. Maybe he's getting a little senile. A little, yeah. little crazy there? I don't know. Maybe that movie money went to his head. He's like, yeah, they made a movie about me. I can do no wrong. But, yeah. I mean... I mean but, hey, you can't do wrong with the Chewbacca Chainsaw Award winner. Go away. Wait, they just they traded, traded him away. away. So, yeah, you can do yeah. wrong by getting rid of them. Lots of wrong, yeah. But <laughs> they are stacked in the outfield. I, I think two-thirds of that outfield was all-stars, so that means two of the three players. But, I mean, Johnny Gomes is a good player. He's a good hitter as well, so he'll fit in nicely there. But Cespedes, I, I believe he was locked up for another three, four years under contract, so uh, I don't know. I don't quite agree with that. And they've already got plenty of pitchers. They did trade for Smarja and Hamill earlier this year to kind of solidify that lineup. But eh, can't blame them for wanting to go out and get another ace. I mean, and Lester was kind of the, the Boston Red Sox ace this year, so not too surprising. Now, again, Boston all over the news. Uh, they did another trade with St. Louis, which was very interesting to me because they lost to St. Louis last year in the World Series. Or, no, they beat St. Louis last year in the World Series. I'm sorry. And I just wouldn't want to make a team that's a potential rival any better. Well, unless you think that you're getting better because of it and they're getting yeah. worse. Like, if you but think you, you're not going to make a trade unless you think you're getting something beneficial out of it. Well, no, again, yeah. these are these, they're trying to get rid of people that are, you know, about done with their, their, their contracts. And I mean, this is what the Red Sox are pretty much doing. This is what I see them doing. They're getting rid of all these guys that might be up with contracts next year so that they can pay an exorbitant... They're probably going to spend $100 million in free agency next year. I mean, that's what the Red Sox do. That's what the Yankees do. They just throw mad wads of cash at free agents. They're like, here, take more money and more money. And, uh, yeah, so that's what it looks like they're going to do. And if you remember, I believe it was two years ago, they were at the bottom of the AL East, pretty disappointing season. And then last year they won the World Series, and then this year they were the bottom of the AL East, and so does that mean next year they're going to win the World Series? Hmm. I mean, the Red Sox traditionally have been in the World Series quite a bit. So, I mean, they're one of those big teams in baseball that... Well, the past well, 10 years, but they, they had the whole, oh, we didn't win for 85 years. Shut up, I don't care. They didn't win the series, but they made it to it a no, number of times. And they were always good, so, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, that trade I was talking about um, with St. Louis, they traded first baseman Alan Craig... Uh, well, they Boston got first baseman Alan Craig and right-handed pitcher Joe Kelly, and they traded away John La- Lackey, another very solid starting pitcher, and Corey Luttrell and Cash. I never quite understand how this Cash thing works. It's like, okay, we're going to give you this much money, but it, it, I guess it's really to help them pay off the contract for one of these other players for taking them off their hands, but uh, I, I never understood how you trade Cash. It's nice. Uh, it's... Um, Called an exchange, Brian. Sometimes you have to supplement. Not the stock market. All right. Cash. <laughs> I make cash you got to give cash. Sometimes I go to the store and I trade them cash for goods. <laughs> Just today, mm. I bought mm. an Arizona watermelon drink and I paid for cash. Actually, I didn't. You know what? I paid with a credit card. So nobody uses cash anymore. Like, do they shit? Like, is it a million dollars? Like, I want a million dollars in non-sequential 20s delivered to my house or else no trade. Like, is that how it goes? I don't know. Now now it just sounds like trafficking. I don't know. (laughs) Meet me behind there. I'll give you amazing player. You bring me a suitcase filled with cash. No one has to know. (laughs) But uh, like I said, Boston also did six trades in the past, like, 15 days. So they also did a trade with Baltimore. Very inconsequential. And New York. So it's like, hey, if you're a rival of ours, we're going to trade with you. Like, maybe they're poisoning those teams on purpose. huh? Maybe that's that's how they're doing it. They're like, all right, we're going to s- trade them these guys and then pay those guys on the side to be horrible for those teams so that they can be better later. Mm. That sounds like a Red Sox thing conspiracy. to do. It does sound like a Red Sox thing to do. Because last year they were like, oh, 
we want the Red Sox to close, clinch, and uh, win the series in Boston. They haven't done that in 100 years. It's like, shut up. But you won it three times in the past, like, 10 years. Shut up. Why don't you come to D.C. where we haven't won anything for the past 20, 3, 4, 5 years? Yeah. Sucks. Ever? Yeah, we've won stuff. What? Sometimes. Well, the last championship we had was 91 for the Redskins. Oh, well, hold on. Okay, but baseball? Oh, baseball, never. Never. I mean, the last time the Orioles, I mean, that would be considered kind of a Washington team team, uh, won anything, I believe, was the 79-80. So, mm. it's been quite a while. Quite a while since yeah. we won anything. And there's a bunch of other little trades that I have written down here. But you know what? Oakland making some trades. Again, they, they got an outfielder, Sam Fold, for a pitcher. from, uh, And they sent Tommy Malone over to the Twins. A bunch of un- non-consequential things. Most people wouldn't know most of those names. But I was actually kind of surprised with the price. Cespedes, uh, Johnny Gomes, John Lester, John Lackey. I mean, you had some pretty big trades out there today. So, huh. It was a pretty interesting time at the trade deadline. But let us know of any trades that we might have missed out on that you, you think I should have talked about. Um, what do you think about this whole trading for cash? What would you do with the cash? Hmm. Where would you get the cash? <laughs> yes, where would you get said cash? Where let us know. <laughs> let us know in comments down below. Of course, words, uh, at WordsMyFace on Twitter, WordsMyFace at gmail.com, Google+, and Facebook. All things. Please, let us know. Hit us up. Say holla. Okay, don't you don't have to say that. I was just joking. That was that was just kind of. You can if you want to. If you really if you want, want to, to. I won't. I won't. I'll holla back if you holla. But yeah. I mean, I guess that is kind of like seven years ago. But yeah. okay. so <laughs> let's move back past me dating myself to when I was actually cool. Uh, you're dating yourself. <laughs> that, that is <laughs> pretty bad. bad. I'm dating myself. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, dating myself. That's mm, hey, that's kind of weird. But and let's move it on to the AFC West preview. Now, the AFC West was the best division in the AFC last year, and kind of interesting. We started off with the two best divisions in football for our first two of the six-week countdown to the NFL. So coincidence? Probably not. not. It wasn't, because it was west and west, and so that's just kind of how I did it. Next week, I'm probably going to do north, and then north, and then east and east, and then south. Eh, you, you see how it goes. But uh, like we did start it off last week, we are going to be breaking down each division, kind of give you some of the biggest wins, biggest losses of the season uh, for each of these these teams in each division, uh, and give you my kind of pick on how they're going to do. So let's start it off with the AFC Super Bowl champion representative who got absolutely humiliated against the Seattle Seahawks, and that is the Denver Broncos. Um, yeah, Peyton Manning had a record season. Probably the best, not probably, I take that back. Retract probably and say definitely the best season a quarterback has ever had. He broke the passing record. He broke the touchdown passes record. He had like like zero interceptions. Uh, he maybe had like five but that's ridiculous. He was like 10 to 1 touchdown to interception ratio. You'll never see that again. So I hope you watched it last year. But let's break down some of their key well, losses. They didn't win. Yeah, they didn't win. The they Super got Bowl. Like I said, they got humiliated in the Super Bowl. It was really, really bad. And uh, and so some of their, their key loss was actually Eric Decker. And now I put this like kind of like asterisk key loss because then they added in Emmanuel Sanders from Pittsburgh who is an awesome wide receiver. He's also a really good return man. So really their loss was their game. So, but I had, I had to do it. I mean, like I said, I was going to give you key losses and key gains, but I guess I can't really have a key key gain without a key loss. I, I don't know. I'm kind of stumbling here. So you could have a key gain if without a key loss, if you're just no. gaining and then you're just a good team. No, no, but that's not how I'm writing this segment. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I'm rewriting it. Okay. Fine, you can do it. Your only good things, <laughs> only gains. That's how my team only works. gains. Well, they're gains. Um, now I usually only try to do one player for these key gains, but the, their defense, which three years ago was pretty darn good, second in the NFL, and kind of fell off when Peyton Manning showed up there. But they got uh, my opinion for the best free agent cornerback out there last year, a kid to leave, even better than Darrell Revis, if you ask me. Uh, they got him. He's a shutdown corner. They got a great safety in T.J. Ward. 
and they got another great pass rusher to rush the edge with Von Miller um, in DeMarcus Ware. So, I mean, their defense is going to be stacked next year. So look for them to return to form. And even if Peyton Manning has like three quarters of a good of a season as he has last year, they're in the Super Bowl again. So, yeah, yeah they're going to they're gonna do pretty well. And let's move it on to the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, they started out 9-0 and last year, so everybody's like, wow, 9-0 and from a 2-14 and team the year before. And they looked pretty spectacular. Then they ended the season 2-5. and So, stumbled coming down the stretch. And that's kind of because they're, the beginning of their year, their, their schedule was just like the easiest schedule ever, so... Yeah. Yeah, and they had to face the Broncos twice, so... Well, yeah, towards the end of the season. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, that's when they started doing bad, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so Jamal Charles, really look for him to pick up where he left off last year. This this guy, I believe, accounted for about 45% of his team's offensive production. So look for that again. That's going to be pretty studly. If you are a fantasy football fan, look to pick him up within the first four picks. And if he's there and you have number five, just count your blessings because he's an amazing player. But uh, their key loss was about three-fifths of their offensive line left this year. So, uh, yeah, good luck, Alex Smith. Uh, you're not mobile be- to begin with, and it's not going to help you very much not not having those guys there. But now nah, what can you do? But their key gain, they got an inside linebacker, Joe Mays. So should be pretty good. Uh, I mean, In relation to Billy Mays? Yes, they're brothers. I thought uh, so. I don't. <laughs> Just Does he shout out. about? He he has the cleanest jersey. I'm cleanest sure. Cleanest jersey. <laughs> so, but yeah, so uh, that's that, that's the Kansas City Chiefs. I do expect them to be above 500 this year, but I'm looking at more like a 10 and six, nine and seven record because I think they played above their heads last year, and I don't think they have that in them again. So look for that. But Tom Bali, he did rush the quarterback very you never know i mean it is the nfl parity is paramount i mean like i said kansas city was 2 and 14 in 2012 and then they were 11 and 5 in 2013 so you never know what's going to happen anything can happen that's why everybody loves the nfl and let's head on down the road to san diego probably the most beautiful place in these united states of america because it never gets below 70 it never gets above 80 and yeah that's the best weather ever that is their key gain and key loss is their weather. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It. <laughs> it's a nice place, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, but last year, if you were watching football and you had the NFL season pass, this was the team to follow because it seemed like every game either went to overtime or was won in the last couple seconds. So they were the most exciting team to watch, even though they only ended up 9-7. and seven. What can you do? But they they were pretty special to watch because you have Phillip Rivers – Hadn't didn't really have that good of a cast of wide receivers, but that guy he's a game play, game maker so game maker a gamer I'm just gonna go with that yeah I'm not very doing very good on my little uh, analogies tonight it's okay Brian so we so if we, if we were gonna do anyway. a key loss of of words for my face it would be Brian's loss of the ability to manipulate the English language blah, blah, blah. Oh. So there. yep boomy. I'll take it. I'll take it good. Well, I, I won't take it good, but uh, whatever. <laughs> so, their key addition was actually Brandon Flowers, which I thought Kansas City was really stupid for letting him go. Now, he, they changed over their defensive uh, scheme last year, and he really struggled in that, but the year before he was a pro bowler, and he was one of the best shutdown corners in the game, so uh, I don't quite know why you let him go, but Hey, Kansas City's loss is their gain, and that was not a big loss for Kansas City because they dropped them in the middle of the season, so that didn't count. Um, and also, that was so that was their best addition. Now, they did lose LaRon McClain, the fullback, and most people think that the fullback really doesn't do much. He gets, like, maybe five carries a year, catches the ball a couple times, doesn't do much. No, he's integral to that running game. Ryan Matthews had a great season last year, and a lot of it was because of LaRon McClain, so... They're going to miss him there. Um, yeah, look for that running game to fall off. But yeah, you never know. That's Like I said, it's the NFL. It's, it's, it's like guessing the roulette table. It's, it's not that easy. Not that easy at all. And then everybody's favorite lovable loser, the dregs of the AFC West, the Oakland Raiders, are the last on this list. And now Oakland... Um, if they stay Oakland... 
No, why, where would they go? You didn't hear? What did I not hear? There was talks about uh, trading them to... Um, where where it was? I think it was... Um, uh, San Antonio. Really? I mean, their color scheme... Not trading them, but a... moving the team to, well, to San yeah, Antonio. Well, I mean, the San Antonio doesn't have anything to trade back except for cash... Maybe they'll give them cash. <laughs> We've talked about this. This is a trade thing. We'll trade you player for cash, team for cash. But, oh, really? No, I didn't hear that. I, I really can't imagine them moving out of Oakland because, really, L.A. is their fan base, and L.A. doesn't have a football team. So that that would be a huge fan base loss to the NFL. I can't imagine. Yeah, and, and Raiders fans are pretty diehard. I mean, they're, they're mm-hmm. serious guys. I wouldn't want to, like... I don't see a reason to, to leave that kind of base, but I don't know. That's yeah, right. how they do it. I've heard, you know, Raider, the system that they have in Oakland is not the best. Like, the owner's not the best. Well, them, when he passed away, um, yeah, their crazy owner passed away. And he was good back in the 70s and 80s, but, yeah, kind of kind of went a little crazy towards the later years. But, I mean, they're just always in such a crazy state of flux. Like, this year, their key additions was Matt Schaub, James Jones, and Maurice jones Drew. Now, Matt Schaub from the Texans, James Jones from the Packers, and Maurice jones Drew from uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, And so that's some good pieces, but these are all old pieces. Now, James Jones, not so old, but Matt Schaub, over the hill, coming off a really bad injury last year. Maurice jones Drew is, like, 30, and in running back years, that means he's 175. (laughs) Didn't know if you knew that, but 30 equals 175 in running back years. So that was kind of bad. And they lost uh, Lamar Houston, a great pass rusher, defensive tackle, and Rashard Jennings, who was a really good running back and a little bit younger. So, you know. Yeah, and there's definitely a lot to be said for veteran players. Having veteran players in football is a great thing, but you don't want your entire team to be to be too old, definitely. Um like we've seen here in in Washington, uh, there was a few years that uh, Washington just went after, you know, veteran players, veteran quarterbacks all the time, and it was it was okay, um, but it wasn't going to push us into where we needed to be. It wasn't going to push for the playoffs if yeah. everyone was I mean, the just best like grabbing veterans. The so. best you're really going to get if, if you're snatching up all those veterans is about an 8-8 eight eight season, and you're exactly correct. Because you need that youth, that energy, that vibrancy, that something that nobody else has seen really too much over the veterans where, yeah, you get something proven, something you know what you're going to get, but maybe nothing spectacular. But you need those players every year to step up and go beyond expectations to have a really good winning season. Because yeah. if and everybody you... knows what's coming at them. The NFL is the smartest league in the world. They will game plan. They will figure out how to shut you down. You need those surprises. And you need the guys that are in their prime or about to be in their prime, not the guys that are on the back side of their prime. Um, I mean, Again, the experience is great. The uh, knowledge, the ability to, to read plays is is great with veteran players. But if they're on the backside of their prime, you need s- something else there. You can't have everyone on the backside of their prime if you want to push forward. Like, well, yeah, you way. can have everybody on the backside of their prime, and then you're just called the Oakland Raiders or Washington Redskins. Yes. And that equals no Super Bowls. <laughs> now, the Redskins have changed it around a little bit, but we will get into that when we have our NFC East preview a couple weeks down the road. So, yeah, so let us know what you think. Who's going to win this division? My opinion is that the Broncos are going to win this division again. Uh, but, you know, who do you think? Who, who are you pulling for? Did I miss any big additions or losses? Uh, what's going to happen? Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at Where's My Face on Twitter, Where's My Face at gmail.com. And as always, Google Plus and, Twitter and Facebook. So hit us up. Let us know what you think about the AFC West. Because football's almost here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it football. should be this weekend. Because this weekend's August. Come on now. Well, actually, uh, preseason games are going to start. I think the Hall of Fame game's not too far away. So, I mean. I want to watch my team up. this weekend. I'm not going to watch my team this weekend because they're not going to be there. No, they won't. But they will be on August 7th, so not too far. All right. <laughs> Let's, this segment is dead. Let's kill it and move on. Okay, so everybody knows that here at Where's My Face, 
I, I, I'm not going to speak for producer Brendan, but me myself, I absolutely love Kevin Durant. Now, I am a homer through and through. Usually, if you're a really good player and you win a lot, I do not like you unless you are for the Washington franchises. But there's this one player, and he's a special guy. He's the most classy, upstanding, slash best individual out there. He, I mean, he shines the golden ray of hope from all sports. I mean, he's the reason that kids should look up to sports players, which I usually don't agree with. I say sports players are not role models. They just play sports. Kevin Durant, amazing sports player. Slash role model. And I'm bringing this up because you know how I do. I have my Kevin Durant rant, usually weekly during the NBA season, and i got to figure out ways to keep talking about him. I love the guy. I can't just not talk about him. Like, my head might explode if I do not talk about Kevin Durant every week. And recently, he's been at the Team USA basketball camp, and they're getting ready to start off the FIBA World Championships. It's really the World Cup. For some reason, every sport because soccer has a World Cup, wants to have a World Cup too. Because like, there's a, Did you know there's a World Cup of softball? I did not know. I know that they're in the Olympics, but okay. No, softball's been cut from the Olympics, dude. What? Yes. Yes. Uh, but they do have a... like. There's a World Cup of rugby, there's a World Cup of softball, ba- soccer, and there's a World Cup of base- baseball. Basketball. Next there will be a World Cup of baseball. That'll happen. I'm sure it will. It's not too far away. But uh, yeah, so there's a World Durant, Series of baseball. There is. Huh? That's true. Mm-hmm. And you, you get a cup like thing, I guess. Yes. No, you, don't. you don't really. It has a lot of flags on it, so I just lied. If you don't know baseball at all, you get a cup for a championship trophy. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But so Kevin Durant was interviewed recently. And uh, a lot of the topics, because this is what's going on, had gone to LeBron James. What do you think about what LeBron James is doing? What do you what do you think about that? Well, let's just go to some quotes. So when KD was asked about LeBron James going home, he said, I thought it was well thought out. It was classy. It's fun seeing guys think about more than just basketball. He thought about the city he was from. Hmm? 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 If you admire that move, hmm? Hmm? Where are you from, Kevin Durant? Hmm? Mm-hmm. Right, so so good signs. He thinks it's a good thing to go back home and play for your home team. And he also went on to say in that, that same kind of quote, I just didn't want to write it all down, is that he thought that him going back actually helped improve morale of some of the younger people in that area. He was really helping the youth of that area really kind of be able to reach for their dreams a little bit more, showing you, hey, I came from the same type of circumstances, so reach, work hard, and you can do well. And anybody who knows Kevin Durant, like I said, he is one of the most classy, upstanding individuals. Every year he comes back to D.C. to do some sort of event. Uh, So, I mean, and just for the youth. I mean, Kevin Durant is all over the place, and he doesn't even play here. So, you think it's classy to go back home, hmm? Hmm? Hey, hey, might be classy to come back to D.C., eh? Eh? Yeah, although he does already, like you just said, come back every year when he's off and already give back to the community? Does he need to play here is the question. Be quiet. Never say that again. Of course he (laughs) needs to play here. Of course he needs to play in D.C. We don't have no championships in basketball since 1970-something. So we need some now. Never as the Wizards. Yeah, never as the Wizards. Never as the Wizards. And if you don't know, Kevin Durant actually has a curly W, a Washington Nationals W, uh, tattooed on his body, so pretty awesome. You see him in photos outside of basketball, like during the summer and stuff. He's usually wearing a Redskins hat. Hmm? Hmm? He helped the Redskins get Deshaun Jackson. He recruited a player for us already. I mean, come on. What better place? But let's 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 delve in deeper with some more of his comments. So when asked, um, uh, so he's actually out in this camp with Bradley Beal and John Wall. Both of them were invited to try out for the USA basketball team. And when asked about playing with Beal and Wall at USA Camp. So first, Kevin Durant on Bradley Beal. Beal has, is a tremendous player. I'm a big fan of his. Just one of those guys who's going to be a treat to watch for the next 10 to 15 years. Playing for, his, for, playing for my hometown team, I love him. And notice he said playing for my hometown team, which is DC, yeah, yeah, and he loves him, and he thinks he's going to be around for the next 10 to 15 years. Who else do you say you love if you don't want to play with him? I mean, come on. Come on. All right. There's a nucleus in place. He realizes it. He knows he can put us over the top. Let's see what he says about John Wall. I like John. He's a great player. You know, one of my great friends. I'm glad he's here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. He's making bond in friendships with them. Mm -hmm. And you don't think that perhaps he's just complimenting no, all no, the players he happens to be playing with right now? What did now? I say about Kevin Durant? <laughs> if I didn't say he's the most truthful truthful player in the NBA, then I'm going to say it now. He's the most truthful player in the NBA. He does not lie. I do not believe Kevin Durant can lie. I'm not saying that he's lying, but like it's not the he, why would he insult his his currently teammates in the field right now? Yeah, but why does he have to say he doesn't have to go that far? He could say Wall's a good young player. I think he's a, a great up and comer. He could say Bradley Beal. I think he's a great young player. He's going to be fun to watch. But no, no, he, he says that he loves Bradley Beal and he's great friends with Drake, John Wall. <laughs> That's what okay. he says. So, but, and also, uh, yeah, I missed this point. What was I going to say? Damn it. All right, never mind. I'm going to keep going. But, <laughs> uh, so, also, well, yeah, this is what I was going to say. Hey, brain fart. Can we edit that out later? No, we can't. Okay, never mind. <laughs> but uh, if, if you remember... In the 2006 Olympics, was that? No, 2008 Olympics. That is when Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, and LeBron James all got together and really started playing together for a long time. And that is where they kind of hatched their coup that they were all going to end up in the same team and win some championships together. So there is a precedent set by LeBron James, by somebody who Kevin Durant is calling classy and making well-thought-out decisions um, to do something like this. So... Not quite the same. He's he's kind of combining both of uh, LeBron's uh, deals and just coming straight to DC. But that's a, another thing. Now, you might say, well, hey, Oklahoma City has been a really good team for a long time. They've made a bunch of finals. Well, they made a bunch of conference finals. They made the finals once and actually lost to LeBron James's team. What what could be th the reason he would leave? I mean, like, why would he leave that? Well, you know what? A lot of those players are kind of on the downward slide. Their their window is fast closing, because they... I mean, Russell Westbrook's a great player, but I think he realizes that he can't win a championship with a point guard who is not a facilitator. I, I mean, that's one of my big things. You need a point guard who dishes the ball. Now, don't get me wrong, Russell, Russell Westbrook is an amazing player. He's one of the best pure scorers out there. But there's only one... Like, I mean, when you have the best pure scorer out there, you don't need another one of those. You just need somebody to pass him the ball. So, mm. that's my opinion. But, pretty much, he's asked, like, hey what would happen in Oklahoma City, like, what would be the only way you wouldn't, we can stop these rumors of you going to D.C.? And he says, well, if Oklahoma w wins two years straight, that would be cool. It would be tough to do anything. Building a dynasty with two in a row. So that is the only way he can, he'll he'll stay in Oklahoma City, is that if they it's win the two in a row. the only way he'll definitely stay in Oklahoma City. He didn't but if say that's, that's the, the only way he'd stay in. Okay, okay. That's the only way he'll definitely stay. I'm going to read between the lines and say that's the only way he stayed, is if he wins two championships. So I'm going to have to take a turn for the worse next year and root for Kevin Durant, but root against the Oklahoma City Thunder, which is something I don't like to do because I want Kevin Durant to do good and win, but now I want his team to lose. Yeah, I don't know what to do. I'm kind of in that catch-22 because I have oh, to have Oklahoma could win next year. And then lose the year after. Oh, that'd be cool. Okay, that's what I'll root for. You win next year, lose the year after, and just be horrible the year after. Like, so bad that you have to leave and come to D.C. Like, really, I mean, and, and he was asked in a couple other comments. I didn't write them all down. But where were the places you would go? And he said, I would never leave Oklahoma City unless I was going to D.C. So, you know, it's one of us two. And all these other teams that are positioning themselves to maybe go for the Kevin Durant sweepstakes not going to happen. And by the way, one of the best teams positioned for the Kevin Durant sweepstakes is actually the Washington Wizards because they will have a lot of cap space. They have a lot of players that are going to be coming off the books in the next two years that can be re-signed for less money, especially if they get Kevin Durant. So they'll have a lot of space. I believe they'll only have three players locked up for uh, that year, and that is John Wall, Bradley Beal, and Marcin Gortat. They're three most talented players right now. So, yeah. Yeah, Kevin and Durant. for the record, Brian already said, like, a month ago, maybe more, that Kevin Durant would be coming in 2016. Now he's, he's just saying it again, that there's just more evidence for it. And I'll, I'll probably say it again one or two more times. So. Yeah, and obviously all the evidence is biased towards that idea because he's already predicted it. And, otherwise and I'm going to skew like everything cool. I can to make myself right. That is very true. But yeah, let us know what you think. Do you think I'm, a, I'm, I'm an idiot uh, and I should put down the pipe and stop having these pipe dreams? Or 
is Kevin Durant coming to DC? Yeah, let us know in comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter, Words My Face at gmail.com, and Facebook and Google Plus. Always places to hit us up. And uh, if you're Kevin Durant and you're listening and you want to just email me directly saying that you are coming to DC, you just want me to keep it on the DL, I will do that for you, KD. I will. You have my email. Please. <laughs> But yeah, so, but that does it for tonight's show. That that was our sports show, and wow, we're actually uh, Brendan, producer Brendan was like, "Hey man, we gotta try to keep it closer to thirty minutes because that's what we tell people we do, and then we always do fifty minutes." So, yeah, I mean, we're only about ten minutes over this week. I'm proud of us. Yeah, unless we keep talking right now. Well, which we are <laughs> because this is going to let give me a chance to announce. So we've been talking about things we can do to kind of just you know get more involvement with our community, and so. As you notice, I have a beard. It is very big. It is very shaggy. Now, I might trim it before the competition really begins, but this is going to be the Tell Me How to Shave My Face competition from Words for My Face. Yes. We'll figure out another one. So what I want is I want submissions on how I should shave my facial hair. Should I shave it all the way off? Should I do goatee? Tell me any crazy thing, like shave off only half and then have, you know, have half beard, and I will do it. Now, don't tell me to do some crazy, like put a star pattern in my face, because I'm not that good with my trimmers. I mean, uh, let's let's make it reasonable that I can do, but it can be goofy. You can just tell me to have the, the handlebars. I'll do whatever you guys tell me to do, and I'll keep it for at least a day. Maybe longer if we get a big response. So hit us up. Let us know. Comments down below. Uh, all those other places, at Words My Face on Twitter, and the winner will um, not get a prize, but uh, get to humiliate me. So, hey, what's better we'll than a that? shout out. Or and everyone that votes. Out. Everyone and that votes for that one. And so, uh, that is going to be our competition. So, we're looking forward to hearing your interesting responses. Um, yeah. Like, I guess if you tell me to shave half my face, that'll be weird. I'll be like Two-Face. I'll do the show like this and then freak everybody out by turning to the other side. That'd be cool. I'd be down with that. Or if you tell me just to shave, like, the mustache and leave the rest of it there, that'd be that'd be kind of weird, though. I mean, I, I, I can't even think of anything, so you guys got to be more creative than I am just to torture me with it. So it'll be fun. Let's have fun with this. But as always, I am Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. I can't really hear it. Yeah, the headbanging doesn't work as well with the shorter hair, but it still flies around a little bit. Good night, everybody!